So now what you are going to… you can hear… you all can hear me, right? So I'm sharing the lecture slides. Good. Um, so far you guys are well aware. of how to define and how to collect statistics or the data. Um, you also have, we also have learned about how we organize and visualize different types of variables, right? So who can tell me the types of the data? How many types of the data? What are the types of the data? Can you tell me any single uh, name of the type of the data? because you have already learned the types of the data. There are different types, right? Uh, it includes uh, time series data, cross-sectional data, panel data, right? A different kind of data. Then we talk about sampling. There are different kinds of sampling, how we conduct those sampling. We have learned that. We also have learned that how to make a numerical descriptive, including the central tendencies and spread. Spread means variation, how to make a variation through range, through IQR, interquartile range, uh, variance, coefficient of variance. You have all have a strong grip on this. Am I right? So, what is next? I can say that you know you can recognize and handle any kind of data or distribution right now. And you can also recognize different kind of distributions and or data. Am I right? So if yes, then we move forward to learn about different concepts of basic probability. There are certain concepts which you should know and also clarify yourself that uh, we will cover in this section. These includes uh, priori probability, we can also call it classical probability. This one, we will talk about that, what does exactly this mean? And uh, mainly here, we use the previous knowledge. So previous knowledge about the outcomes is already known. And uh, we use that knowledge in order to in conclude chances of occurrence of uh, different outcomes. Um, you know, we have learned about the probability. Then we will talk about the empirical probability, which is totally based on the experimental observation. Uh, what is an experiment, what is an event, what is an observation, all we are going to talk about this shortly. So prior probability, prior probability or classical probability is totally based on knowledge, whereas um, knowledge which, is, which we know, which we observe the probability of the own outcome and the empirical probability is totally based on the observed data. So you can get it from the surveys, that's how many are the, how many people are watching uh, on a big TV or small TV. So we, every time when we run an experiment, we will collect the uh, data first, frequency first, and then we, from that frequency, we will uh, find out the probability. Then we will talk about subjective. Subjective uh, probability is totally based on your skills. Uh, so observation of a certain things. For example, if you are a geologist, geologist is a person who can find out what is beneath the surface of the earth. So if you are a geologist and uh, you have to find out, you have to tell me that where can I find some minerals or where can I find the gas. So you based on your existed study, based on your experience, based on your skill. You will uh, study the nature of the um, surface of the soil and you will tell me that there are 
that much chances that the pet the, that the gas or petroleum products are beneath underneath this uh, surface of the earth so that's totally purely based on your knowledge your skills and your experience we will see other examples of subjective probability later on right um we will also see give a lot of examples in today's lesson so i hope that you're gonna be feel fresh to understand these concepts before coming uh, we, uh, to the probability and further going into different distributions probability distribution you need to learn uh, we need to learn that what is event what is joint event we will define all these um, titles you can see in an outline so what is complement event or complementary rule what is sample space what is contingency this you know already know what is contingency table right how we display the data into table there are different ways simple probability joint probability how to calculate them margin probability conditional probability additional rule of a probability what is the decision tree how we make the decision tree uh, based on our hypothesis multiplication or rule and Bayes theorem or bayesian theorem so these are the concepts we're going to cover in today's lesson and the next lesson uh, we i hope that we will finish all these topics within a week uh, or within two classes or uh, two lectures so let's start a brief let me tell you a brief about what is event what is joint event so you should know can you tell me what is an event Oh, wait, there is some message, so let me see what is it. So, anyway, there was some messages. So, can you tell me what is an event? What do you think? What is an event? Can I define an event? We can say each possible outcome of a variable is an event. That uh, anything which I am interested in, anything which I am interested in is an event. Let's say this is a bag and there are a lot of balls with number right one two one two so this ball has number one this ball has number two this ball number has number three and this ball has number four this ball has number five so there are five balls so i'm interested in picking the ball so all these uh, balls uh, which i'm interested in picking is gonna be an event so anything you are interested in would from the selected space, it's going to be an event. So there are can be five possible outcomes from this bag. So all of them are the way outcome of a variable is an event. So all of them are an event. Then there, but remember, if we are interested in that, then there is a concept of a joint event, which means an outcome having two characteristics. For example, a coin yeah a coin has a head and a tail so this uh, there is a possibility of two outcomes from a single event that if you flip a coin it can give us two outcome at us two characteristic that's head and tail so getting if i flip the coin twice if I flip it twice and I get like head twice, 
right? If I flip the coin twice and I get the head, so getting two heads is a joint event. Then what is complement? We will talk about these things uh, in details. Uh, what is mutually exclusive? Uh, what is complementary event? The complementary event, uh, the complement of an event A is A bar, you know, something you have and something you don't have. So what you don't have is going to be your complement, right? So if there is A, so A complement is the rest of the uh, sample space uh, of the probability. So A plus there are some rules, we're going to learn about complementary rules. Then what is sample space? Let's say this is the whole space right and there are different events so here in case of this this bag is the space and within the bag there are different case, uh, there can be different outcomes so overall this is a sample and then we have uh, in that sample we can have there are chances of occurring different events um, in case of uh, coin we have sample space of two because you can only have had or you can have tail. So, in can you tell me in case of a dice, what is the sample space? In case of a dice, what is the sample space? Can somebody tell me? What is the sample space in case of dice? So you see, uh, this is the total sample space. So the, the sample space in terms of a uh, dice gonna be exactly that's right six. Where were we? Yeah, exactly, that's right. And contingency table, you already know, we have done about this. Then we will talk about decision tree. Uh, so what is decision tree? It's really interesting. You, I will just uh, give you a little bit of uh, insight of a decision tree. It's like you are here and there are two possible outcomes. And you decided to go there. So you have to find out the probability here of this outcome. So you don't, this is going to be complement. Right, so at this stage, this is going to be a probability of A, and this is the probability of A complement. But then you don't go on this way, you go on this way. So there are further two outcomes, and then further two outcomes. So it depends what decision you are making to the probability uh, you're going to add up with that. Uh, we will learn later on what exactly that's it. A multi there is a multiplication rule, and we will cover all these topics in this chapter one by one. So let's start with the basic definition. If you remember very on very first lecture, we defined that what we use to measure uncertainty of any event is the probability, right? So you can say what you don't know and you did that mean you don't know the fact what's going to happen, right? So having a chance of occurrence or the likelihood that's the probability. You can, uh, can I say that likelihood? Yes, I can say. So, uh, likelihood of a, an outcome of a particular event is known as a probability. Whenever we are performing any experiment, we usually don't know what possible outcomes are going to be there. So to get probability, first of all, we list out all the possible outcomes. That means we are conducting some experiment. For example, I have a die and I roll out. Let's uh, take an example of a die again. I roll out the die. What are the possible outcomes? You, all, you already know. One, two, three, four, five, or six. Um, If we list all possible outcomes, we call it sample space. We already know that. It means set of all possible outcome of experiment 
is a sample space. So what will be the sample space of rolling two dice? Who can tell me? If I play with two dice, if I roll two dice, So what is the sample space of this? So sample space of one dice is six. We already know. The other dice is six. So what will be the total sample space? 36. So there can be 36 possible outcomes you can have. Exactly, that's right. So these are the possible outcomes we can have, and these total are 36. Uh, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, and so on. All of you are really smart, eh, today. Um, so um, let's know what is an event, first of all, out of this sample space. Whatever you will choose, you will pick an, any outcome that's going to be your event in terms of finding a probability event is a subset of a sample space so this is a sample space event can be any one of here so event can be a event can be b so we can say subset in mathematical way this is denoted by subset so this is sample space this is event a so event a is a subset of a sample space. So it should be from the sample space, not out of the sample space. That's an event. Again, considering the example of a die, when the die is rolled, let's say event A. I'm interested in event A. Or take an example of rolling two dice. And I define A. A is an event that I'm interested in just to have like uh, some of um, two or uh, some of uh, or the even numbers. So there can be different even numbers. Uh, two. That the both the both the dice have even numbers, so it can be two, four, or the sum is even number two, four, six, and so on. Right? In case of single die, it's two, four, six, only three. So what is the probability? The probability will be the event three in one case of one die upon total sample space is six. 1 by 2. So having an event of that the die will show me an even number, there is a 50% chance. And 50% chance that the die will going to show me an odd number. Right? So showing even number on the die is one event. Because here we define it as an event with even number. It can be that there is only one on the die, then the event graphically we can present in this way. So two events can be mutually exclusive or can be mutually not mutually exclusive. So we will see what is this. Um, but before going next, let's define probability in a proper way. before going to baseline concept. So can I define probability? We can divide, first of all, we can divide probability into main three types. As I told you here, these three types. Uh, classical probability, empirical probability, or subjective probability. What is classical probability? 
it is used when the each outcome, remember, each outcome in a sample space is equally likely to occur. It means we already know the classical probability for event E is given by uh, number of outcomes in event by total number of outcome in sample space. If you observe, it's similar as relative frequency we have learned uh, in a form when we were showing the descriptive uh, how to display the data in the tabular form of quantitative variable. So relative frequency was almost a similar concept. But uh, we can refer mostly relative frequency with empirical because in classical we know exactly that how many times the event has occurred. In t let's take an example of a die. We already know that there are six possible outcomes. So we don't need to run an experiment. So in that case, uh, the relative frequency, you can link it with the classical, but it's more suitable in empirical. Here, we know how many times the event has occurred. That's also known as prior probability. And thus, for example, taking an example of coin, uh, we know already the outcomes, head and tail. In case of, uh, even in case of rolling out two dice, we again know that the number of outcomes are possibly 36. What is empirical? Let's talk about the empirical later on. But here you should know that existed outcome you are interested in number of outcomes in an event divided by total number of outcomes in the space. So that's the classical probability. Let's take an example. A die is rolled, find the probability of event A, rolling a 5. There is one outcome in event A, 5, from total outcome of 6. So probability of A will be 1 by 6, which is 16% um, or seven, almost 17%. So roughly there is a 17% chances that if I roll a dice, it will show up me the five. And you know, if you are playing or if you are betting money on the rolling a dice, so it's not only about luck. You need to calculate different probabilities. This is simple. This is classical probability. But later on, you will learn about the conditional probability that if uh, how a person can... Uh, evaluate the possibility of occurring some event. Later on, we will study about this in today's lesson. In, in an empirical or statistical probability, it's also known as statistical probability. Now, this we already have learned that it's totally based on our observation. The more the experiment we do, the probability is keep changing. So that's why it's purely uh, kind of a relative frequency. What I can say that I will toss a coin to 100 times. All right, this is a coin that so I will toss coin 100 times. Let's say this is head and the other side is tail. And then I will observe, let's say 70 times I got head and 30 times I got tail right. in 100 times. If you'd the coin, maybe in your case, there will be 60 times head and 60, 40 times tail. Someone else does maybe 80 times head and 20 times tail. So these are the ways you hearing depend on the different uh, observations are uh, different experiments. So in my experiment, there are 70 heads and 30 tails if I toss the coin 100 times. And then now I observe and I can calculate the probability. So in my case, the probability of head is 70%, right? That, because the outcome of head is 70 times out of 100 observation, or, 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 yeah, out of 100 sample space. Uh, similarly, we can also observe how many times the outcome appears to be uh, one, number one, number two, number three, or number four in case of a rolling out a die. And then we will calculate the probability. And exactly that's why we can link it with the relative frequency. 
Similarly, we can also roll, um, you can also roll two dice for 10,000 times or 1,000 times to see how many times you are getting two sixes, right? I mean, like the sum is 12 or at least one five or at least one four. So that's how you can um, get the observations on data. Then you have to make the frequency table and then you have to calculate the probability of any event. So here E is an event. So don't get confused. This is an event. The probability of event is frequency of that event divided by total frequency. That's it. So it means that this is a relative frequency. In economics and financial example, uh, financial themes, we mostly consider this probability as a function as a function, and we mostly use this probability. Sometimes we also use a classical and subjective as well. Let's take another example. There is an agent. She used to reserve. Uh, There's an ag agent, she used to reserve um, book uh, seats for different things, for plane traveling, for train traveling, for cruise traveling. So we are interested in an event of a cruise traveling. So in every 50 reservations, when she makes a 50 reservation, she makes 12 on the cruise. So if 50 people are coming to her to book the something like the plane ticket or the railway ticket so 12 people are usually most i mean the, the out of 50 the 12 people are coming to book the reserve so what is the chance what is the chance that uh, the next person will reserve for cruise that's so what is the frequency of the cruise how many people are booking for the cruise 12 people so this is the frequency of an event we are interested in and what is the total sample space which we are based on our experiment this is an experiment we already have 50 observations total observation is 50 so it's been total frequency is 50 so it means that there are 24 percent chances that next person who will come in the office to book some uh, seat or traveling uh, seat will be going to be probably 24 uh, percent possibility that he or she going to book the seat for a cruise. Do you understand? So that's the empirical based on our observation. Let's talk about subjective. As I told you, subjective probability is purely based on the knowledge, skill or experience. You can also say an educated guess. It's, it's result from intuition, intuition, educated guess, or end estimates. Let's say you are a financial expert, and you can analyze about certain stock that there is 30% chances or 40% chances that it increases over the time. Again, this is based on your knowledge. Uh, I gave, already gave you an example of a geologist who can tell that under this surface there is a possibility, there are this much percentage of chance that there is a gas or petroleum product underneath the surface. So here you are considering the nature of the subject, nature of the event, you, based on your experience. I, another example is really good one. Uh, let's say you know, maybe, I don't know, for you, but for me, it's, uh, it's there because my elders, like my grandfather used to give me a lot of advices. That's another thing, some advice, some pieces of advice I took, some pieces of advice I ignored, right? But mostly elder can predict about us based on the, their experience. And then they conclude some advice that you should do this because if you do this, there are this much chances that you will get this. So if you have wise elders, they mostly they use subjective probability to give you a piece of advice. Do you understand that?
Now we, you know, how the basic theme of um, probability, classical probability, also known as a uh, prior probability, empirical probability, and subjective probability. Let's come back to the baseline concepts. So before running, what you need. So, uh, sorry, why is like this? Oh, you should know what is an experiment. The most important part in an experiment is an event, and event can have different natures. Let's take the same example of event on uh, number on of dice. So here. We're gonna have uh, a sample space one, two, three, four, five, six, and A is uh, an event that is probability of A. So, how we can say if we consider two or more than two events from the same sample space. So, uh, experiment is a, sorry, uh, yeah, yeah, experiment is an outcome which is unknown, which we don't know. And why is like, hold it there. Beforehand, rolling a die and observing the number that it's uh, rolled in a probability of experiment. Result of a single trial in a probability experiment is the outcome. And we know the sample space, set of all possible outcomes, omega of experiment, just denoting it with the omega y, because you will know later on. Example of the space when rolling a die has six outcomes. Now, event is a subset of the sample space. So sample space is shown by omega sign and event a occurs if the outcome, any outcome, any single outcome belongs, so this means belongs, belongs to subset of A. A die is rolled and we have uh, event A is even number, is rolling an even number. So in this case, uh, W is 3, right? So probability of A can be 3 by 6, which is 0 0.5. Remember, probability always lies between 1, 0, and 1. In this example, so these are the sum, sum of two dice. All right. So, what is the probability of the event that I will get the sum as a 5? So, what is the total sample space? Total sample space is 36. So, these are the sum. Uh, so, sum is 5. It should be 1, 2, 3, 4. So, event is that the sum is event A. I define it as a sum of two dice rolled is five, which is uh, how many times the five appears? One, two, three, four, four. Right, so what's gonna be the probability of A? You can tell me. Simple. One by nine. Eleven percent. Why one by nine? Because it's the same thing. Four by thirty-six. Eleven percent, right? So that's how we can calculate. Because here we are interested in only sum of two dice. So that's gonna be an event A. 
sum of two dice is five. That's what we are interested in. And you can just uh, play with your classmates that, uh, okay, now let's find out the probability that at least one should be five. So one should be five. Here, one is five. So this row and this column, one, five, one, five, at least one die shows five. So total there are 11 because this is repeating. Um, so 11 by 36. Thirty percent, right? So thirty percent chances if you roll two dice is one. At least there will be one five. Now, if we go back here, you need to understand some concept. So this you understand, and similarly, if you in case of one die, you can say. Let's say the total sample space is one, two, three, four, five, six, and there can be an event A, which is uh, even number, and event B, or event A, which is an odd number, uh, and event B, which is an even number. So A gonna be so what is A? One, three, five. What is B? Two, four, six. So A is even number, B is two, four, six. Do you think, is there anything common between A and B? I don't think so, because these are two different. So if A is one, three, five, B is two, four, six. So we can say that this is a sample space omega with two events a and b but in this example it is a is mutually exclusive means they don't include each other so they are two separate events a is different than b that's it uh, we call it um, mutually exclusive because there is nothing common in A and B. It uh, can be denoted as um, union sign. So it's not a U, it's a U shape. That's a union sign. And in statistic, remember, it means R. This or this, A or B. All right, and it is given, I can write it like A union B. We will see that, what does that mean? But let's say if A is a one, three, five, and B is a one, two, three, Five. B is a set of prime numbers. Now here there are something common, right? So that we will show in this way. So there is A, there is B, but there is also some common thing. It means they are A and B are not mutually exclusive. Do you understand? And this is no. We can show it with intersection. And it, we can show it with the inverse U shape. It means the common area between two events, A and B. So here, in this case, 1, 3, 5 is A intersection B, because that's the common. It's an event of having 1, 3, 5 is a common area, whereas 2 is uh, on the A side. Do you understand? Let's go with more. So mutually exclusive two events, A and B are mutually exclusive if they cannot occur at the same time means there is nothing common and as I told you A union B in statistic it means R and intersection means AND. So A union B such as uh, W belongs to sample space total sample space whereas this event belong to A or 
this event belong to B, it's not possible that this belongs to both of A or B. Just we have learned in the case of even and odd outcomes of it rolling a die. Whereas intersection means A, B, and it is defined, uh, mathematically it is defined as, or uh, this um, shown as, given as A intersection B, where mega belongs to a sample space for sure, but it can also belong to A and belongs to B. We have done this example. So here A and B are mutually exclusive. If there is phi between, phi means nothing. It means nothing. So if A intersection B is phi, means there is nothing common, then they are mutually exclusive. If there is common, it means that it's, it's not mutually exclusive. Do you understand? This is A and B. So A and B here are mutually exclusive. This is A and B, it's not mutually exclusive. Why? Because there is certain common area. This is the graphical uh, presentation of uh, sample space. So this is total sample space, is this under this boundary line. And this is event A, this is event B. Do you understand this? Good. So let's take a 10 minutes break. And when we come back, uh, we will see the, what is the rule of complementary? Uh, what is the complement uh, of an event? So you guys can enjoy the break and you can ask um, each other 